church services department. And how much of this favour, how much of this favour actually cost the council? So can you tell us how much the council has spent or spent on the church services project? And will it be um, the equality of these convicts that the council needs to insist on uh, proper governance arrangements in terms of when it's making its investments and good practice in terms of project management? that are business cases that are produced prior to embarking on transformational projects. Councillor Kelly, your question, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The leader states in his uh, report that the uh, Council's financial position for 2014-15 is now agreed. However, the budget position around school costing control for the remains uh, confusing. Uh, we've been clearly told that no controls have been removed for lack of funding. We've been clearly told that the schools do not have to pay once. Can you advise them exactly how many schools have signed up to use their education budget so far and how many would you expect to sign up by the end of the financial year? And you also advise how the number of cabinets that have deleted the school cost control budget, how the services will be funded in the future, and will you agree with me that continued uncertainty, confusion, etc., is unacceptable to the schools, to parents, and the public to the staff? <coughs> I welcome the fact that we're all council is taking the lead on promoting the living wage. But the leader of the council outlined the main outcome to stop the inaugural meeting hosted by the council last Friday on reading that the Western Council to this reform agenda. Thank you. Would you like to respond to those
um, is some 9.4 billion over the next two years. And the only, the only the other thing I, I would, would, would add, um, if, if the party opposite had bothered to come to the members' seminar two weeks ago, or most of them opposite, had come to the members' seminar on the future council, they would have heard all this information. But unfortunately, for whatever reason, they, they took a decision not to engage in these important mental development events, which I think uh, is very, very sad. But I think that's more of a reflection on where they're up to than their group rather than any wider issues. And um, yeah, about the council. I will continue to provide opportunities for all members to engage in these important debates um, going forward. Um, finally, uh, Jeff's, Jeff's assertion that the council needs to um, uh, move to the model he's looking for about proper governance arrangements. Um, Mr. Mayor, the reality is we've put this work on hold before we sign any contract with Chester West and Chester because we've done our due diligence. The business case <coughs> does not stack up. Um, what would have been even worse if we'd have said yes, we'll go ahead on the basis of these projections? He, Jeffrey would have been the first person to go to the council chair and say, you shouldn't have signed the deal. The business case doesn't stack up. The returns aren't there. What I'm saying at the moment, the, the, the benefits are not clear, and therefore that's why we put the decision uh, on hold. And I am, I am very, um, I am very confident that when we return to look at this in, in the autumn, uh, I do believe that a shared services uh, arrangement is going to be an important part of the future um, council work. Um, so. On to Councillor Kelly's question on school crossing controls. Um, Councillor Kelly spent the last year trying to sabotage this construction. I mean, it's a shame. Um, I, I really do think it's a shame. Um, because, the, the, because the reality is that on school crossing controls, uh, a couple, couple of points. Well, no, not actually. A couple, a couple of points, really. But first of all, um, there is an appetite amongst a number of our schools to work with the council on sharing costs. Of school crossing control. There are a number of schools. Um, my deputy leader's uh, school, that is the chair of government, are, are active in one such school that already fund the cost of school crossing controls. In terms of the um, initial uh, survey that we did, you asked for the figures, um, I think I'm, I'm quoting these from memory. I think 26 said yes in principle, 17 in no, uh, said no, and the rest uh, have moved on because they haven't had governance meetings. What um, I've been very gratified uh, about is I've had a letter from the chair of the primary heads consultation group to say they are very keen to work with the council over the next 12 months uh, on coming up with a formula for agreeing uh, to share the, um, the cost of school crossing controls. A number of schools, not all I accept, have substantial balances uh, and a number of schools have uh, an additional uh, amount of money in the budget through uh, things like the pupil premium. So there is an appetite. Uh, there is an appetite. There is, there is an appetite. There is, there is an appetite, Stuart, for primary schools to engage uh, with the council on this. And what I said very clearly as part of our budget resolution is that we will work with schools. The, 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 let me be very clear the safety of our, our, our young people is absolutely paramount. There's no doubt about that. And where, where we can agree with schools to share the costs of school crossing controls or where they need to take on, why would we not want to do that? It would be madness to say, you know, uh, no to that. But where a school is either willing or unable, I'm saying that we have got funds available. For example, you'll know from the, if you've read the latest revenue monitoring report, we have an 866,000 underspend in this financial year. We are able to fund uh, those crossing controls with schools whatever reason, I can't now fund it. So I think there is a positive uh, appetite here to work with the, between the council and with our primary schools to come up with a solution to this. And I, I really wish that um, Councillor Kelly would work with us rather than trying to constantly, constantly scuttle this body off. And I think that's a, that's a great shame, but that's obviously a, a matter for him. Mr Mayor, um, on to Councillor Gleason's question about the living wage. I mean, I've said many times I was delighted when this Labour administration introduced the living wage. You made this council the living wage yeah, yeah. last year. I, that was one of our proudest <coughs> achievements. Yeah. And also, I was absolutely delighted when uh, 
uh, Councillor Chris Jones, our cabinet member, negotiated the ethical care charter for social care staff to provide care in many of our um, in many of our establishments and elderly people's homes. That care charter means that every member of staff working on those projects get paid a living wage. And we have done away with zero hour contracts in all of those. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think it's a, it's a shame. And there was a report today um, from the Office of National Statistics uh, around zero hour contracts. Official figures show that nearly 583,000 more employees, um, 583,000 employees are now on zero hour contracts. In this country, which is more than double the government estimates, yeah. uh, and that's happened since 2010. That is an absolute thing. Uh, the party opposite should be ashamed of presiding over that state. And I believe that we uh, need to have uh, doing away with zero hour contracts as an absolutely key priority of this council. Mr. Yeah. Mayor, in terms of the, the meeting that we hosted last Friday at Council Williamson asked about, I was really proud that I was attended by a number of Councils in the North West. Uh, we're looking at how we can collaborate together on all of these issues. Uh, a number of councils have done what Wilderness does, which is great. We need to learn from good practice. Clearly, you know, we shouldn't be really bad wheels. But let me just finish by saying, Mr. Mayor, I want us not just to be a living wage council, I want all our public sector agency colleagues, all our public sector agencies, NHS, Police Bar, I want them to pay all the living wage. And then I want to work with our big employers. Because I think that's the, the bigger uh, prize, really. And I want us not just to be a living wage council, I want us to be a living wage borough. And I'm proud of that. Yeah. Yeah.
this council and all members have said this before have a duty to engage and make a contribution to um, the future of the council and doing that through the, the training programmes and through the culture change programmes that we will bring forward. Um, we will be bringing forward a, a, a programme of con um, consultation and engagement with members, all members. But I do want to just finish by saying that the week that we had the survey, um, the, the outcome of the survey was it's across, the, the, the survey was completed by a cross part of section of our chief of the membership. And um, what, what was definitely said was that we needed a very clear role and responsibility to, to promote high standards of political conduct between political group members. And I think that's where the culture change uh, you know, begins uh, across the the party. So, um, yes, I do think those comments were regrettable, but it won't stop us from moving forward and progressing for the you know, a, a clear uh, area of culture change, clearly followed by the approval of all the scenarios that we take on board. Lots of work has been done across the city staff in recent months, and we are now moving on to, uh, to develop a programme of uh, culture change for members. So, thank you for the question. Thank you for that. I give my apologies.
area based budgets for the combined value of over 1.5 million enabled councils to work closely with communities to establish local priorities, strengthen and engagement, and helping the most <coughs> demand by promoting self help. I hope that in some way gives you some form of uh, idea of where we are. Okay? And, and that has taken place by the way over a four year period. That's what we need to start from. So they're four years down the track, we're in for our second year. That's where we're supposed to be. In terms of stewards, stewards, if you don't mind, I will come back to you on that one. I will give you a bit of a statement in terms of the, the amount of local work that we're actually doing on our sites and also whether there are any censorships uh, in, involved in, in there as well. So I'll we'll come back to that with you. Andrew, you can go to your question. If you just give me a, 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 a choice, you, you wanted to know something about the. Um Thank you. 